Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. A couple of days ago, over on Hardware Unboxed, we published a video covering the best gaming monitors you can buy right now. However, that video is primarily looking at the US market and is focused on US pricing, which only really applies in some parts of North America. The United States provides around 25% of our viewership, which is the largest of any country, hence why we almost always use US pricing, but many of you have requested a more specific version of these videos for other regions, especially Europe as a whole. So today, I'm providing a Europe-specific best monitors video, same sort of format as the other video, where primarily we're recommending monitors we've tested and know to be good, check out our other in-depth monitor reviews for more information on each product, and of course these recommendations are not sponsored in any way by any company, they're based on our testing and reviews. European pricing is much more complicated than US pricing as companies have various different prices for each country, and discounts or limited time promotions may only apply to one country instead of the entirety of Europe. There's also multiple currencies to worry about, including the Euro, British Pound, and all the other smaller currencies. So if we went through talking about prices in over 30 individual countries, this would be a very long video indeed. Instead, I'm going to take a more general approach to European pricing, focusing mostly on the Eurozone, using an average of best prices from many retailers across multiple countries. You're still going to have to do some digging into specific prices for your country, but this should give an idea of generally what products are better buys in Europe compared to North America, where indeed some products are cheaper and some more expensive relative to pricing across the Atlantic. But yeah, did one of these videos last year looking at Europe and people appreciate it, so we're back again to do it this year as well. Let's get into it after a word from today's video sponsor. This portion of the video is brought to you by Ugreen and their new Nexode 100W MagSafe charger. Experience the convenience of this sleek, high-quality desktop charger that offers 15W wireless charging at the top, along with three USB ports on the front, and an impressive 100W output from a single USB Type-C port. The 100W MagSafe charger is also equipped with GAN technology, ensuring effective temperature management. Ugreen also has a new 25,000 mAh 145W power bank for those on the go. With such power in a portable form factor, it can fast charge laptops, and thanks to its bi-directional charging technology, it can be charged within two hours while also rapidly charging connected devices. These Ugreen products are compatible with a huge range of devices, so for more information and Black Friday deals of up to 50% off, please check the links in the video description. There are so many options in the 1440p monitor market right now that picking out the best ones is pretty difficult, especially as they can be quite similar. My thoughts in this category haven't changed too much from my recent best 1440p monitors video, but here's a summary of some thoughts from that video, and if you want to learn more, check out the dedicated guide right here on Monitors Unboxed. If you're after an excellent bang for buck 1440p gaming monitor with a refresh rate around the 144 to 180 hertz range, I don't see much point spending more than about 300 euros right now. There's plenty of quality below that price point. My pick of the bunch, depending on where you live, is either the MSI G274QPF-QD at around €290 Euros, or the LG 27GP850 at around €280. Euros. While not identical products, they are reasonably similar in what they offer to gamers. Both monitors are 27-inch 1440p IPS LCDs, but they differ in panel and refresh rate. MSI uses a 170Hz AU Optronics panel, while LG sticks to a 180Hz panel from LG themselves. They end up pretty similar overall in key areas to performance, and both are nicely balanced between motion performance and color quality. I think you'd be happy with either one, and I'd probably just get the cheaper option, especially as in some countries. The price difference is quite large, and only one will be available below €300. Euros. If they end up pretty close in price, there are a couple of notable differences. The MSI model features a wider color gamut and better coverage of Adobe RGB, along with a higher, though not amazing, contrast ratio. The LG monitor has better tuned response times and is slightly more accurate from the factory. At the same price, I'd probably get the 27GP850, but again, there's not a lot in it. I'd also consider two monitors that I haven't tested, which in Europe are regularly quite cheap. The LG 27GR75Q and the ASUS Tough Gaming VG27AQ1A. Be very careful with that ASUS monitor as I'm specifically talking about the IPS LCD version, not the VG27AQA1A, which is VA. And I haven't been impressed with lower cost VA LCDs lately. 
I expect both this and the LG to be paired back versions of the other monitors I was talking about earlier, and hopefully I'll get to testing them soon as they are quite popular in the region. For high refresh rate shoppers, after a 1440p 240Hz monitor, the choice is simple. Either get the MSI G274QPX or Gigabyte M27QX, depending on what is cheaper in your region. In the US, there is a clear price advantage for the MSI model right now, which is why it was the primary focus of our main buying guide. But in Europe, there's about a 50-50 split as to which product is better value across a range of countries. Typical pricing is between 400 and 500 euros, which I think is pretty reasonable. Again, like with the lower refresh rate category, there isn't a lot separating these two monitors. They trade blows across most categories. The MSI model has a somewhat higher contrast ratio and color gamut. It's a bit more efficient, and both monitors are decent performers across the refresh rate range for VRR gaming. The Gigabyte model comes with a KVM switch, is the faster model at 240Hz, and is a bit better tuned at the factory. Either option is a great choice in my opinion, and it's good to see healthy supply of the M27QX over in Europe at the moment. If you're after the overall best 1440p gaming monitor, that is the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQDM, which is a 27-inch 1440p 240Hz OLED display. This is a truly excellent product in a lot of ways, delivering motion clarity that destroys most LCD monitors and gets very close to 360Hz offerings. Even if you weren't that interested in HDR gaming, the PG27 AQDM is a great product for competitive multiplayer gamers due to its speed and high refresh rate, and it gets even better if you play a variety of games that include both multiplayer and single player. That's down to the excellent HDR capabilities of this OLED. Deep zero level blacks, per pixel local dimming, and good levels of brightness lead to a stunning HDR experience while gaming. There are a few downsides here, such as the weak text clarity and risk of permanent burn-in, so it's not a great display for productivity, but for 1440p gaming, there are few products as good as this one. If you don't want to spend 900 to 1000 euros, fair enough, that is a lot to spend, then the LG 27GR95QE might tempt you. It uses the same OLED panel, but doesn't get as bright, and will only set you back 700 to 800 euros in most countries. Also worth considering for the ultimate motion clarity at 1440p is the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQN, which provides a 1440p 360Hz IPS LCD panel. This display slightly edges out the OLED in motion, while also delivering better input latency due to its higher refresh rate and the option of clarity enhancing backlight strobing through ULMB2. It's a well-calibrated, great-looking display, but in Europe it's disgustingly expensive at over 1,200 euros most of the time, which makes it much more difficult to recommend than in the US, where it's just $900 US right now. I'd only consider this if you were a hardcore multiplayer gamer that needs the feature set. If you're after a 4K high refresh rate gaming monitor right now, pricing and the quality of options is the best that it has ever been. For those after a 27 inch 4K monitor, the standout option in most regions in Europe is the Gigabyte M28U. Over in the US, I've also been recommending the Gigabyte M27U, but it's not available in Europe yet. There's also the MSI MAG281 URF, but it's typically too expensive in Europe. This leaves the M28U as a clear favorite most of the time, although on occasion, the LG 27GR93U is also a solid buy, with the best pricing for both monitors sitting below 500 euros depending on the region. The M28U has been a great performer since I reviewed it a few years ago, and it continues to age well as its price falls. It offers a great balance across all areas to performance, from response time speed to color quality. Motion performance is similar to that of other modern IPS LCDs, and the panel is decently well optimized for adaptive sync, especially in the upper part of the refresh range. No glaring flaws here. I was also very impressed with the M28U's factory tuning, especially its sRGB mode, which is quite accurate, although its brightness and color gamut is only average relative to some competitors. I think it's a highly versatile monitor that's great for both gaming and desktop work with its nice 28 inch size IPS technology and 4K resolution at 144Hz. In some regions it could also be worth considering the LG 27GR93U, which can be a similar price to the Gigabyte model, but this is highly dependent on the country. I've seen pricing anywhere from 480 to over 600 euros for the LG, and I just can't justify it at 600 euros most of the time. Compared to the M28U, the 27GR93U is much brighter and consumes less power, making it more efficient, and its response time performance is very similar. LG offers a wider range of calibration options, but the Gigabyte is better tuned from the factory. 
Honestly, I think most gamers would be happy with either, and again, the LG is quite a versatile product. At 32 inches, I'd be recommending the LG 32GR93U or the Gigabyte M32U, which are usually priced between 600 and 750 euros depending on the country. I think the 32GR93U is the better monitor, with superior response times, a higher contrast ratio, and wider color gamut, but it's also usually the more expensive product outside a few countries where the LG is currently on sale. The M32U is still decent, and as the more affordable product, it could offer that bang for buck you're after. I elaborate a bit more on these products in our recent best 4K monitors video right here on the channel. If you're after a high-end 4K gaming monitor for HDR gaming and elite speed, at this point I would strongly recommend waiting for OLED options that are set to debut in the first half of 2024. Even if you aren't set on an OLED and are currently considering LCD options like the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7, I think we're close enough now to 2024 where it just makes sense to wait and see how those products perform and where they are priced. If they end up being super competitive, that will see the current 4K HDR offerings of today drop in price, which is only a good thing. What we do know is that in 2024 we will be getting new 4K 240Hz OLED monitors, starting with 32-inch QD OLED options that have been announced from ASUS, MSI and Dell. There are also plans for 32-inch W OLED and 27-inch 4K 240Hz using both QD OLED and W OLED tech, so it won't be too long until there is a wide range of options here. I expect most of these products to be relatively expensive, but that's also the case today with LCD options offering true HDR. I'm expecting to learn more at CES 2024 in January, which is just a few months away and I think worth waiting for. When buying an HDR monitor in 2023, the usual caveats apply when researching the range of HDR options out there. Be very careful about products that advertise HDR without actually offering any real HDR capabilities. These monitors are often advertised as display HDR 400 and they simply aren't worth buying or considering in any way. But if you do want a true HDR product, luckily these days there are some great products on the market and yes, while they are quite expensive, the experience on offer is excellent. To determine which HDR monitor is best for you, I'd recommend first deciding between a regular 16x9 format or an ultrawide, and then considering screen resolution and display technology. For those after a 16x9 monitor, the best of these in my opinion is the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQDM. As I talked about earlier, this is a 27-inch 1440p 240Hz OLED with excellent motion clarity and elite HDR performance. It's a highly versatile product that's well suited to both competitive multiplayer gaming and visually stunning single player experiences thanks to its strong combination of features and performance. It's bright, especially for a W OLED panel, it's vibrant, fast and responsive. Really hard to go wrong here, although the drawbacks for OLED like its burn-in and sub-pixel layout hurt this monitor's usability for desktop work. I also previously mentioned the LG 27GR95QE, which is a great lower cost option, offering not quite the same level of performance as the PG27 AQDM, but the same OLED panel. If you want something larger or higher resolution for 16x9 HDR gaming, like I said in the 4K section, at this point, I would strongly recommend waiting until 4K OLED monitors are released in the first half of 2024. There are some good products I've recommended before, like the Odyssey Neo G7 and LG C3, but with a new range of capabilities set to be available in, hopefully, the next six months, including 32-inch 4K 240Hz OLED, I think it just makes sense to see what they offer in terms of price and performance before making an expensive monitor purchase. I'd hate to drop a thousand euros on a monitor right now, only to have it superseded within months. If you want to go down the ultrawide path and feel that format is right for you, you've certainly made a great call, as in my opinion, the QD OLED ultrawides are some of the best HDR gaming screens available today. I also personally like the 21x9 format and its better immersion than standard 16x9 monitors, but it's not for everyone. If it does sound like something you're after, well, let's get talking about the best ultrawide monitors, because the top choices there are also what I'd pick for ultrawide HDR, so let's get into it. The best ultrawide category is another that features quite a stark split between the top and bottom ends of the market. In my opinion, if you're after an ultrawide, you should either spend big and grab a QD OLED for over 800 euros, or go something budget. Anything between these prices typically isn't worth buying as it either offers only a minor upgrade on our value picks or a significant downgrade on the top picks. 
I also haven't looked into more budget class ultrawides in quite some time, so in this video that isn't a focus as my recommendation would likely be out of date. For high-end shoppers, it's quite clear that the ultrawide market is now dominated by QD OLED monitors, and there are many to choose from, all offering a 34-inch 3440x1440 QD OLED panel at up to 175Hz. We have plenty of breakdowns available on Monitors Unboxed that compare and review the main options. I've tested five of them at this point. Right now, the standout choice is the Dell Alienware AW3423DWF, which was fixed in the middle of 2023 via a vital firmware update that improved HDR accuracy and brightness. It's also one of the most affordable options on the market, on sale at the moment in many regions, at the time of making this video, for just 850 to 900 euros. Given its improved performance and great price, I'd recommend it over the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 at the moment, which would be in second place. The AW3423DWF offers a 34-inch 3440x1440, 165Hz QD OLED panel with a 21x9 aspect ratio and 1800R curve. The star of the show here is its excellent HDR capabilities, including zero-level blacks, per-pixel local dimming, and a high 1000 nits of peak brightness, all with decent HDR accuracy, provided you are running the latest firmware. As an OLED though, it's also very fast in terms of response times, offering great motion clarity that's really no different to some of the 175Hz competition. That's such a minor refresh rate difference that it's basically negligible. I also appreciate the Alienware's decent build quality, use of full-size display inputs, low input lag, and largely inaudible fan. Like many OLED monitors though, I wouldn't recommend it for productivity work, mostly due to the risk of permanent burn-in, as well as some minor concerns around text quality. These QD OLED monitors also have poor screen coatings and composition that require optimal placement of lights in your room to reduce reflections, just something to keep in mind. However, in some countries you may find the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 is the better choice, as it's cheaper or even similarly priced to the Alienware, although typically the AW3423DWF is cheaper and better value by 100 to 200 euros. The OLED G8 brings its own set of strengths, of course the same QD OLED panel qualities, but it also has smart TV functionality, allowing for a wide range of color control adjustment. It's also a fanless design with a premium finish, which some buyers may appreciate. It really comes down to price as to which option makes sense, something that you'll have to assess for in your region. In the 1080p product class, I think it's actually quite a simple story these days. Either you're after an entry-level monitor to get started with PC gaming, and I think 1080p is still a suitable choice if you have less than 200 euros to spend, or you're more interested in a super high refresh rate option for competitive gaming with features like backlight strobing and fast response times a priority. For those after an entry-level gaming monitor, my recommendation continues to be the AOC 24G to SP, or in Europe more the AOC 24G2 SPAE. This display offers excellent bang for buck, providing a decent quality 24-inch 1080p 165Hz IPS LCD panel. While the regular SP model can be hard to find, the SPAE model is typically priced in the 120 to 140 euro range, which is a great deal. Of course, you're probably wondering what the difference is between the 24G to SP and 24G to SPAE. Well, the AE on the end signifies a reduction in USB ports on the monitor and a fixed height stand instead of the height adjustable unit. Typically, this shaves off the equivalent of around 20 euros to the price. Otherwise, it appears to be the same panel, which should deliver identical performance to what I saw in my review of the 24G to SP. The 24G2 SPAE performance-wise is a solid choice, offering great response times in its class and solid color quality. The overall package AOC offering is nicely balanced between gaming performance and image quality, so I'm comfortable continuing to recommend it. The main negatives are simply that it doesn't have class-leading performance in any area. It's not the highest resolution, or the highest refresh rate, or the best performing display. But it's so well balanced that it doesn't really matter, especially for just 140 euros. In fact, one country even had it listed for like 120 euros, which is unbelievably cheap. Some people may question why you'd buy a 1080p monitor in 2022, but the simple answer here is that 1440p monitors aren't that cheap yet. For most gamers, I would recommend getting one of our 1440p choices instead, but if you simply don't have 250 euros to spend, then going 1080p is your option, and the 24G2 SP offers something great here. 
If you're after a premium monitor for esports gaming, there are two options on the market best suited for that task, but be prepared to pay a hefty price. They are the Asus ROG Swift Pro PG248QP, priced at a whopping €1,000 plus, as well as the comparatively more affordable BenQ XL 2566K at €550 to €600. Both are 24 inch 1080p T and LCD monitors. The ASUS option goes up to 540Hz and the BenQ up to 360Hz, both offering elite tier backlight strobing support. The main benefit to going the ASUS PG248QP here is the higher refresh rate. 540Hz is somewhat visually clearer than 360Hz for competitive gaming, and it's also slightly smoother and it provides lower input latency. ULMB2 works really well on this monitor to increase clarity through backlight strobing, although it only works at refresh rates above 360Hz and for the best experience requires an NVIDIA GPU. The ASUS model also has faster response times, but at €1,000 it's so expensive that I find it hard to recommend to most gamers. The BenQ XL 2566K is a bit more reasonable, though still expensive and largely designed for esports pros. At 360Hz, it's not quite as fast or clear as the PG248QP, but it does still feature BenQ's excellent Dyke Plus backlight strobing technology, which is more versatile than ULMB2 as it supports lower refresh rates. For example, you can get great strobed clarity as low as 100Hz, plus it works flawlessly with all brands of graphics card. It's still reasonably difficult to recommend to mainstream buyers, but it has a target market and it nails what that market is looking for. As both the ASUS and BenQ options use TN panels though, they are designed exclusively for high performance gaming and not visual quality. They have atrocious viewing angles and are nothing special when it comes to other aspects of image quality, like contrast ratio or color gamut. The PG248QP is the better calibrated monitor and even offers a bit of wide gamut, but still, the primary use case here is competitive gaming and seeing your enemies with the greatest possible clarity. And that does it for today's monitor recommendation video for the Europe region. Lots and lots of options to choose from covering most of the categories I hope you are considering at the moment. If you do want to learn more about the monitors that we've talked about today, we do have dedicated reviews for most of them that will go into the specifics around performance and features, which are well worth watching. I also have longer breakdowns available for the best 1440p, HDR, 4K monitors, all that stuff. Though, just be aware that some of those recommendations may be less relevant in today's market. Most of those other videos are also based on the US market. So, depending on pricing and other options, you might want to at least assess what is currently available for you in your region. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you do want to support these videos and hardware unboxed in general, then please do consider supporting us via our Patreon or Floatplan accounts. Links are in the description below. You gain access to some cool benefits and perks, things like our Discord community, ICC profiles that we generate during our monitor reviews, and, well, you'll just be supporting us to purchase monitors that we create for these reviews and recommendation guides. So, yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.